mind sciences or the study of human behavior in relation to the mind is the newest of all the arts. It's less than a hundred years old. And it is by far the, the one that is most cloaked in secrecy. Origins of psychological warfare uh, were in Nazi Germany, and in the Nazi ideology, they had something that was called Wealth and Krieg, which means worldview warfare. The idea for them was imposing the Nazi worldview on the countries that they had occupied. The Americans picked up this idea, created an American version of it, and called that psychological warfare. trying to understand psychological warfare and in trying to understand the American approach to post-war efforts to control people's minds, both as individuals and on a mass scale. There's a lot of illusions about how that was done. Were Nazis involved in that process? Yes, they were. Project Paperclip was a United States government sanctioned CIA operation for the importation of Nazi and fascist scientists into the United States. Their statement was simply this, if we don't bring these people into this country and contain them, then our enemies, the Soviet Union, will get them. first wave was to bring these scientists. There were 700 odd propulsion scientists. And then there were some 600 and some odd mind sciences people that they brought in. The CIA was given a responsibility of actually placing the individuals that had a project paperclip into the military industrial complex, including our colleges and universities. Mind control was a psychological warfare weapon that Adolf Hitler regarded as the answer for taking over the entire planet. The name for the mind control research in this country was MKUltra. MKUltra was one program of a series of programs that came out of the CIA to experiment with different types of mind control, using drugs, using electroshock, using insulin shock, and, and other techniques. I think that the goal for those people who planned the program was very straightforward. It was an attempt to figure out a way to interrogate people and to learn how to protect their own agents against control by others. If you put someone in a position of being disabled by not feeding them or not allowing them to sleep or overwhelming them with sound, if you use massive shock treatment and you give people massive doses of drugs such as PCP or mescaline or amphetamines or LSD, and if you put them in periods of darkness where they can't predict from one minute to another what is going to happen next, so they're always dreading, there's no consistency to sort of what's going to happen, anybody can be put in a position of being open to brainwashing. Newman Cameron was probably the foremost psychiatrist of his time in the 1950s. He was using high-tech sound techniques. He was using multiple kinds of loop recorders to 
force people to listen to recorded messages 24 hours a day for weeks on end to basically destroy people's thinking patterns. He injected the lysergic acid into the vein and he patted me on the shoulder and said, now there, Lassie, we'll see you later. And I started to feel very frightened and the fright became a terror. And I sort of began throwing myself from one side of the room to the other. I didn't know what to do to stop this feeling. It felt like my bones were melting. That I was, um, I just didn't know who I was anymore. It's not just break-ins of people's homes. It's not just invasions of privacy by illegal wiretapping. This is uh, an invasion of a person's mind. And uh, that is about as uh, profound uh, an injury, uh, except for loss of life, that the government can impose. This was a, a post-Nazi program, if you will. It was a uh, an Americanization. I've often made the statement, and I still make it flippantly. The Nazis didn't lose the war; they just had to move. Now it's 50 years later. Now they're much more clever, much more sophisticated. They have a lot more money to spend. are not won on the battlefield, they're won in the minds of the people.